Lance, uh, when you talk about the Steelers, um, that defense kind of jumps off the page a little bit. That's something the Browns have to be concerned about. Yeah, when you watch the defense from early in the year till now, T.J. Watt is a Miles Garrett type guy where he is a absolute game wrecker. Um, they're seven and two when he's in the game. Uh, he's just so dynamic. He, you know, one of the th interesting things he lines up on the, uh, the offense's right side most of the time, uh, which is going to be where the Browns are uh, with Conklin possibly hurt and Hudson have to get in there. So he is, and then he's just one part of a very good line with Hayward and Open Joby. Um, Alex Highsmith on the other side. They got, you know, I, Splane is playing really good inside at linebacker. They have uh, Fitzpatrick, who's an outstanding safety. I would say not not a weakness, but an area they can attack, uh, attack would be those corners. Uh, but they're pretty solid as well. Sutton's pretty good. Um, but that's probably the weakest part of their uh, defense is those corners. Well, And you mentioned T.J. Watt injured at the beginning of the season. But, boy, has he come back and, and – um, uh, you, you mentioned kind of a Miles Garrett thing. The first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, you got to find a way to block him off the edge, and that's going to present a problem for the Browns. Well, one of the things he does very, very well is that he uses this ghost rush, they call it, and he actually doesn't even engage uh, the offensive lineman. He just uses his bend and his ability to rip underneath, and it's really, really impressive. Uh, the Browns are absolutely going to have to help whoever out there at right tackle. If they're in true passing situations, they're absolutely going to have to help every single time. If they don't help every time, and he had, um, you know, he had a set, uh, four tackles, he had a sack, he had two tackles for a loss. Um, just very, very dominant in the game, and he's just always around the football. He's always, I mean, you watch the game, he's almost getting home to Huntley the entire game. So they're going to have to account for him uh, every single snap. The other thing um, that you can kind of tell just looking at that line lineup defensively against the Ravens, um, they got a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. And, and that, um, again, will, will create um, some issues uh, for the Browns. Let's take a look. First one we're going to look at is a five-man front. What do, you, what do you see here and what do you see the Browns as potentially being able to do? Well, the, the, the Steelers did a little something injured. They're a traditional odd front, so everybody's going to that odd or tight front over the last five to ten years, and that's a that's a uh, Steeler tradition. They've always covered that nose uh, against the Ravens, which I think the Browns will see too. They actually went to a six-man front. They went to an even front uh, a little bit as well. So this is the odd front, uh, and my point is I think they're going to have to run their gap scheme. By covering the nose or having that many guys on the line of scrimmage, when you run zone, you lose your double teams. So without those double teams for the Browns, their zone game is not going to be as, as good. So this is a gap scheme here. A gap scheme allows those guys to come off the ball running. Uh, they'll take a double team if it's there. But with so many guys on the line of scrimmage, they basically step with their inside foot, play side. They come downhill running. Those backside guard and tackles come. It, it simplifies the scheme for the offensive line, allows them to get off the ball and kind of move people with all those people in there without thinking who has to come off from the double team. So this is just a guard tackle counter uh the Ravens had a lot of success running this counter uh the other night uh so the other thing that you kind of mentioned there is that's the five man the odd front the even front would be a six man what do you see um with this next clip that uh that's going on here with the Ravens again well this is this is another gap scheme so this is a power gap scheme so now they're going to kick out with Ricard who's basically a lineman uh they're going to kick out with him and they're going to bring the backside guard one linebacker in the box Again, because they're in a six-man front here, there are no double teams, uh, but the entire offensive line gets to have great angles to the guy inside of them. So we like to step inside with our near foot towards the center, uh, take anything in that gap to the next level, which would be the linebacker, and the rules with the gap scheme remain the same regardless of the front. So in a zone scheme, you have so many rules and regulations. With a gap scheme, you're looking for a double, but if everything is messed up and there's lots of people, just step inside and get off the ball. And that's what the Ravens do to these fronts is they're stepping inside hard, they're washing the front side, and they're getting good kickouts and up through by their big guys. So what can the <clears throat> what can the quarterback do in that? If you're, if you're bringing that many guys at the line, um, man on man, that gives quarterback that can run only one guy to beat, correct? Yes, and with the Browns, they don't have to have anything new. So that counter game, they can read the backside end. Uh, if they do decide to run zone, which you can still run zone, I just don't think it's as proficient without the double teams. Uh, you can run the zone read 
Uh, you can do, you can run some easy RPOs, uh, especially some simple slants with the number two and three receiver. Uh, you can just add on to what you do without having to change those offensive linemen. And if you talk to any offensive coordinator at any level, they just want those offensive linemen to have the same rules regardless of what's going on with everybody else. Those linemen want to know who they have, and they let all the skill guys do whatever they want. Uh, but, yeah, when you add the running quarterback in there, now you're adding a, a dimension that can really hurt a defense. So uh, the other thing that we kind of touched on at the very beginning, the Browns can potentially um, attack the Steelers' secondary, and that's the next clip we're going to see. Well, they, Wallace is you know Wallace is a pretty good corner. Uh, Sutton's a pretty good corner. Got a guy named Arthur uh, Millette, who's their, their nickelback. He's a good player. He's real aggressive. So he's one of those typical uh, nickelbacks in the NFL right now where they like to play a long line of scrimmage. They like to get involved in the run game. Uh, they have run uh, gap integrity, gap rolls, CD gap rolls at times, uh, but they are susceptible to coverage. And if the Browns can get Nadoku, or they can get Cooper and uh, DPJ in the slot, this is a match that they can really take advantage of. Millette is a guy who struggles with double moves. He struggles with guys who are uh, elite route runners, and Cooper might be the most elite route runner uh, in the NFL. So I think that's a matchup. I think the Browns match up well with all their their secondary people of the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers, but I really think this Millette guy is a guy they can attack. Um, but he'll make his plays a line of line of scrimmage. They got to attack him in the pass game.